Well, welcome again to my studio. Today I'm going to teach you how to, what shadows are and how to pick a color for shadows. We're going to do just a very simple still life, very simple. We're going to do, take one apple out of that, that apple right there. We're not going to do the whole still life. We're going to take an apple and I'm going to show you how do you establish the shadows of an apple or grapes or whatever, but we're going to do the apple. Let's just, just take and right now pick up a color, maybe a dark blue right now. We're going to sketch it on there. Let's sketch the apple on here. That's basically all we're going to work with, okay? The apple is round, basically. Now, there's a shadow that comes across here. I'm not going to tell you how to get the color yet, but I'm going to tell you how to establish it in a few minutes there, okay? Now, now let's tone the apple in real quick just to get the values, the darks, the middles, the lights. Remember, your lights come from that direction, okay? And if you do this in the painting on every object, no matter what you do, establish your values. You know, watercolor people are a little smarter than some of us oil people. They make a value sketch right in the beginning of their, when they're doing something. We don't, we just attack the canvas and go on. And then we don't know where we are. I always make a value sketch, always. Remember, you get darks, go a little darker. I'm just using the blue. You can use any color you want. Hopefully, this will be a good lesson for you. Okay. Leave your lights open here. It's a little darker right in here. Okay. Now, you have a shadow here. We're just going to put a little, it's about a middle value right now in the shadow. Okay. Now, let's put a little color into that. Okay. Take a little color. Once you establish your values, then you put a little color into it. If you notice, I have a color wheel here. We, we established, we did an object on how to do darks, middles, and lights on the color wheel. I'm going to take the color right out of here. I'm going to start out with this, this, just a basic red right here. Let's go a little bit, a little more red here. Let's go a little more cadmium here. Okay. Get into the purple. I'm gonna need a little more red here. I don't have enough on here. Okay, there we go. It's very dark in there. It gets it's warm around here. As that red comes into the the warmer side right here, it gets a little bit orange. And you're getting a lesson on color too, but you're gonna basically this is a lesson on how to do the uh, the shadows. Add a little white to that, just a little bit. Remember, I got all the colors mixed for us already. You take your time with these steps. Take your time. A bit more red right in here. Okay, let's clean your brush between colors. Put a little bit of green in there. The reason I'm putting all the colors in there, and you'll see that in a minute. Taking, let's make let's make the green right here. There you go. Nice little green, yellowish green it is. Okay. As it goes into the center, it gets a little bluish. Darker green is what it is basically. Somewhere in here. Let's see how white white is. Here, let me take a little bigger brush here. I'm going to take a little bigger brush. And let's pick up a bunch of white. I want to show you how white. See how much whiter that is in the canvas? Put a lot of paint on here. See that? Okay. Let's put some paint in here. I'm doing this for a reason. I want it very white, very white. There you go. Okay. Now, shadow. Let's get to the shadows. Okay. And this is very easy if you keep this in mind. And it's easier on a white background than it is a color background. But a shadow, it's a red apple, will always cast its complement, which is green, greenish gray. If you take the red apple, you watch, just go somewhere around here. Here's your, 
Here's your shadow color right here. I can see it right in here. It's going to be a grayish, greenish color. Watch how nice that goes in there. Okay, and I mixed right from what we did before. And I remember that we took a red, green, and red is, green is the opposite of red, went into each other, and we made a beautiful, what we call the pearly grays, okay? Now, where the complication comes in, and this is still not that complicated, is when we take and have a different color background, that, say that background was yellow, it's going to mix with this gray. It's going to be a little more yellow, yellow to it, okay? Let's just take a kind of a dark color. This has a little bit of a stem in here, okay? It's got a little more color in the background. Now, see, all I did was take my complement, red and green, okay? Make this beautiful gray called the pearly grays, okay? See that nice gray? Okay. You can do with this with any color. If this is green, which is a green pair, it's going to cast a reddish, grayish shadow on, on this stuff. The blue is going to cast that orange shadow, which is mostly grayish, once you mix the blue and the orange together. Okay. See how simple that was? We created an apple. Let's go a little bit further right in here as it comes into here that gets a little bit more in the pink. And I'm going to take this color right here. I'm going to just kind of And here, now there's a reflection on there. Reflections usually aren't all white. Reflections got some color into it, okay? Put a little more color, a little more white in that, but less. There you go. A little pinkish color right across here in the reflection, okay? It's got another one here, but don't put reflection. If you put a reflection everywhere you see it, you're going to make your, your apple very boring. Now let's go a little bit more in the toning of it. Now it goes a little deeper red. Go back into right in here. Watch how nice that shadow is going to start coming out. Okay. Now go back in right around here. It's very dark. Take one of your dark colors, somewhere down in here between the red and the purple. Just reconstruct just a little bit. Okay. Let's make it a little darker here. There you go. Okay. Go a little bit more into the shadow now. That shadow's going to get a little darker right here. I'm just going to use the color we had. A little white and a little more white into it. Okay. And that, out here, if you look real close, there's a greenish cast to it. Let's just go into the green a little bit. Watch what happens here. Yeah. Okay. A little, little darker here in the red. Goes right around here. Okay. That teaches you how to put shadows in here. Remember that each color, if it's a red apple, it's a green, grayish green shadow. It's a, if it's a purple, bluish grape, it's an orange, gray shadow. If it's a banana, say a yellow, yellow, it's a purplish, remember the yellow and purple are the opposites. It's a grayish purplish shape, uh, shadow in there, okay? Very simple. But when it mixes with something, it's gonna change a little bit. Again, thanks for dropping in. My name is Dick Ensing. Look me up on my website, dickensingartist.com. Or you can write me, dickensing, at bellsouth.net. Thanks again.